Coming up next, the story of a legendary house of ill repute that operated illegally for over 60 years. It was frequented by everybody from ranchers uh, to politicians and other dignitaries, and they all had a secret pact with local law enforcement to just live and let live. Everything was rolling along smoothly until a famous rock band wrote a classic about it, and a nosy TV reporter with a really bad toupee decided he wanted to attack organized crime, and he had his sights on taking down uh, this infamous chicken ranch. Chicken ranch. Uh, the governor of the state was forced to close this ranch once and for all, but it lives on in a boogie rocker paying tribute to this historic shack of ill repute. Stories coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you tried to solve crimes with Encyclopedia Brown, you're gonna dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Click the big red button and click the bell so you always know when our stuff's coming out. We also have a Patreon, you can check that out. That helps us keep it a daily channel, that's below. You know, there have been many songs that were inspired about a real place, you know, a state or a city. Uh, just a few off the top of my head. I mean, you got Atlantic City by Bruce Springsteen. You got Woodstock by Joni Mitchell and Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. You got New York, New York by Sinatra, Allentown for Billy Joel, and of course, Detroit Rock City from Kiss. New York, New York. And then there's that smoke and jam about a chicken ranch located on a Rocky Creek Road, just outside of the little Texas town of LaGrange. About to check outside LaGrange. The great Billy Gibbons, co-founder of ZZ Top, wrote the lyrics and composed the music for LaGrange, uh, the band's fourth overall single, and the lead track from the trio's third LP, Trace Hombres, uh, in 73. <laughs> LaGrange, of course, a ditty about a shack outside LaGrange, mostly known as the Chicken Ranch. It was a Texas brothel operating steady from 1905 to 1973. It really was a shack, just a cheaply made uh, farmhouse where no signs reading were open or welcome to the LaGrange brothel. Uh, no signs were necessary, really. Everybody knew what the Chicken Ranch was all about. They also knew full well that prostitution was not legal. As long as they paid their taxes, local politicians and law enforcement simply turned a blind eye. You know, they gave the branch its blessing to carry on without any questions asked. To that whole mile gone. In 1905, Jesse Williams immigrated from Waco and opened a brothel on the bank of the Colorado River in Fayetteville County, Texas. Commonly known as Miss Jesse, her business attracted men of all sorts. In order to keep the peace with local lawmakers, she excluded drunks and invited in lawmen and politicians. The brothel became an institution in Texas. State senators and avid supporters of the University of Texas Longhorns and the Texas A&M Aggies would visit the ranch you know, after football games when the home team had a big win. That was a common after game ritual right up into the 1950s. Miss Jessie was a madam on an epic scale. She was a woman of rough hewn uh, country charm and shrewd backwoods tenacity. Having made a pact of mutual coexistence with law enforcement, along with the security of financial prosperity, Miss Jessie abandoned the decrepit downtown hotel they occupied and moved her business to the southeastern outskirts of town. In 1915, Jessie and a partner, Grace Copeland, uh, they purchased 11 acres of land on Rocky Creek Road. This became the, the permanent site of the chicken ranch and, of course, the theme of ZZ Top's LaGrange. I'm all down the Chicken Ranch supposedly got its name at the beginning of the Great Depression in the 1930s. Uh, though the ranch had plenty of clients, times grew harder and cash money was in short supply during the Depression. Therefore, Miss Jessie decided to get into the commodities business, and she began the poultry standard of charging one chicken for a session with one of her working girls. Very interesting. Soon chickens were all over the property, and that's how the establishment officially became known as the Chicken Ranch. The meat and eggs from the poultry, that provided the household plenty of food for the workers, and there was a good amount of extra income that came from the sale of the chickens and the eggs. 
Uh, since what they were doing was illegal, they couldn't very well call their business uh, a brothel. So for tax purposes, Miss Jessie fronted her business as a poultry farm. Uh, very ingenious there. I'm ready for you. When Miss Jessie died in 1961, the ranch was purchased by Edna Milton, or Miss Edna. Uh, she had joined the operation nine years prior to that. Miss Edna befriended Jim Fornoy, uh, the local sheriff, and everybody called him Big Jim. Business was booming under Miss Edna's management. On many evenings, there was a line outside the door with customers anxiously awaiting their entrance into the shack. Can't even imagine it. <laughs> Miss Edna, uh, she also continued the tradition of philanthropy, as started by her mentor before, uh, Miss Jessie. She contributed to local organizations like churches and any other group that bothered to ask. She even made a sizable donation to the construction of a local hospital. Donations to the church. <laughs> it's funny. Even though it seems like an oxymoron, according to ZZ Top's bassist Dusty Hill in an interview in Spin Magazine, there was an air of respectability at the ranch, including specific rules of conduct. Uh, they were strictly enforced by Miss Edna and her security team. First of all, there was a strict dress code at the ranch, and absolutely no profanity was allowed. Since the ranch was located in a dry county, you couldn't drink alcohol on the premises either. Now, Dusty pointed out Miss Edna, she didn't look a thing like Dolly Parton, you know, who played her in the 1982 movie that was inspired by the real thing and adapted from the Broadway musical that ran in 1978. No drinking allowed, we get a nice quiet crowd. Dusty remembered Miss Edna as a mean looking woman who took no crap from anybody. All three members of ZZ Top, Billy, Dusty, and Frank, they all admitted that they went to the ranch several times. As Billy confided, when you were a young boy, 15 or 16 years of age, going to the chicken ranch, it was like a rite of passage. They got a lot of nice girls. Huh? Billy Gibbons was a man of few words when he wrote the lyrics for LaGrange, but he didn't need to say much to describe the subject matter of LaGrange. You know, with just a few hints, anybody familiar with that little Texas town knew exactly what he was singing about, talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Just let me know if you're gonna go. Yeah, LaGrange is short on lyrical substance, but ZZ Top let the music do all the talking. It's the music of LaGrange that transports listeners on a sweltering adventure through the steamy backcountry of South Central Texas, for sure. I mean, it's irresistible groove. Uh, it's wicked change-ups and ravenous open blues solos set the vibe for this iconic track. LaGrange actually stemmed from an instrumental jam session meant to warm up the band. When the band set out to record the track for Trace Hombres, uh, Billy went off, you know, with perhaps the most memorable guitar solo of his career. I mean, as the solo unfolds, it weaves through intricate twists and turns, craftfully transitioning back to the main groove with a clever modulation. But that's just the tip of the iceberg here. Beneath the surface, the song is driven by chunky chords that propel its infectious rhythm forward, always moving forward. Rumor spreading round. And just when you think it couldn't get any hotter, Gibbons adds another layer of intensity during the song's extended runout, strutting around the track with undeniable swagger, man. It's moments like these that you know, solidified LaGrange as more than just a song. It was the catalyst that propelled ZZ Top from a regional sensation to a national force to be reckoned with in that much as could take that one to the bank. <laughs> In the rhythmic heart of LaGrange uh, lies a nod to tradition, drawing from the boogie blues rhythm famously employed by John Lee Hooker in his timeless classic, Boogie Chillin'. Boogie Chillin'. Yet in 1992, a legal storm brewed as music publisher Bernard uh, Bresman, who owned the copyright to Boogie Chillin', leveled allegations of infringement against ZZ Top, claiming that LaGrange borrowed too heavily from John Lee Hooker's classic. It certainly appeared that Besman was being an opportunist, you know, trying to get some quick money from the little old band from Texas. He claimed that he hadn't heard the song until 1992, shortly before he slapped the band with a lawsuit. And even though the song at that point had been out for 19 years and played on classic rock radio or radio for that matter for millions of times. Uh, Besman said he was stunned when he heard LaGrange and how similar it was to Boogie Chillin'. 
After years of litigation, though, the courts rendered their verdict in 1995, dismissing the case. Uh, they decided that the song was public domain and the band was not liable. Uh, the decision preserved the legacy of the beloved Texas trio. In a very transparent interview with Guitar World back in 95, Billy Gibbons peeled back the curtain on the iconic guitar sound of LaGrange. With a glint of nostalgia, he shared the secrets behind the, the mesmerizing tones that echo through this track. He said, and I quote, it's simple really, just a 1955 strap plugged straight into a 1969 Marshall Super Lead 100 amp. As he delved deeper, he unraveled the mystery behind the fuzz laden lead, attributing it to the pure tube distortion coursing through the setup. Each nuanced tone was crafted through meticulous adjustments of the pickup settings, you know, a dance between the guitar and the amp guided by intuition and a relentless pursuit of sonic perfection. And as he reminisced about the days before the advance of modern conveniences like the five-way toggle switch, uh, he chuckled softly recalling the dedication required to unearth that elusive perfect tweener amidst the, the darkness of the unknown. So cool. As the band delved deeper into the heart of LaGrange, Billy paused, his mind wandering back to the blues legends of yesteryear. With a reverence for the past and a keen ear for detail, he drew inspiration from none other than the legendary Robert Johnson. You better come on in my kitchen. We'll pick up on how that influence blew up LaGrange after I mention our sponsor, Zanny Eyewear, the glasses I always wear on here. You know, with summer coming, you can actually order custom sunglasses you style it without burning your budget. You can get up to 80% off regular retail prices by clicking on our info button and you can get glasses for your glasses, sunglasses for your glasses. Try it today. So back to ZZ Top and Robert Johnson. Like a musical archeologist unearthing buried treasures, Billy dissected the notes of Johnson's iconic shuffle, each one a testament to the soul of the blues. And as he breathed new life into those age-old melodies, he infused LaGrange with the spirit of Robert Johnson himself, a timeless homage to the roots of American music. In the heart of Tyler, Texas, nestled within the walls of Robin Hood Studios, the magic of LaGrange began to unfold. With Robin Hood Bryans at the helm, the band embarked on a musical journey unlike any other. As a trio of ZZ Top guided by the watchful eye of manager Billy Ham entered the studio, there was a palpable energy in the air. With Ham's strict directive against overdubs ringing in their ears, the band set out to capture lightning in a bottle. With just three of them in the room, the sound was raw and unfiltered, echoing the sparse landscape of the Texas Plains. <laughs> pure Western poetry here, the famous riff of LaGrange began innocuously enough, born out of that spontaneous jam session. Initially dismissed as nothing more than just a warm-up exercise, the band found themselves wrestling with the question of its viability as a full-fledged track. Was this a song? Was this a jam? You know, Billy reflected on their uncertainty, conceding that it started to evolve, growing longer with each iteration, and we found ourselves questioning, is this even a song? We explored every avenue, but nothing seemed to click, his words. During a break in the action, Bill Ham stepped out to fetch some grub at a nearby barbecue, of course. So Robin Hood Brian seized the opportunity to work his magic behind the boards, adding layers of depth and texture to the recording. When Ham returned with the food, the band welcomed him back to the studio with eager anticipation. With a satisfied grin, he listened to the playback nodding in approval at the gritty, unadulterated sound that filled the room. In that moment, they knew they'd captured something really special, a sound that was uniquely ZZ Top. <laughs> Billy found inspiration in another fellow Texan. He channeled Buddy Holly's approach to songwriting, particularly in the way uh, Buddy's song, Peggy Sue Got Married, left certain details open-ended. Reflecting on this, Gibbons remarked, that song taught us that not every line needed to rhyme perfectly. Holly left room for interpretation. I heard it's a rumor from a friend. Was she really married? I just heard a rumor from a friend. So with LaGrange, 
We followed suit. We added lines like, I hear it's fine, but I might be mistaken. It left the door open for speculation. I might be mistaken. In the arena of music, songs often achieve immortality through memorable choruses, standout performances, or iconic titles, right? Yet for ZZ Top's LaGrange, it was a different ingredient that sealed his place in music history. Yeah, it was Billy Gibbons' sultry exclamation of have mercy, you know, followed by a deep guttural, a how, 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 all set against a backdrop of that tantalizing riff. This combination gifted ZZ their inaugural major hit, a track that has proven to be far more impactful than his peak position at number 41 in the Billboard Hot 100 in the summer of 74, for sure. I mean, on YouTube alone, you can see how new generations have discovered the track. An unofficial video of LaGrange has amassed over 170 million views, and the song has been downloaded millions and millions of times. Billy doesn't shy away from acknowledging that his signature, a how, 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 that was inspired by another John Lee Hooker track, Boom Boom, released in 1961 and, of course, later popularized by the animals. You know, in the world of rock and roll, originality often takes a backseat, and Billy remains nonchalant about Kid Rock's adaptation of Son of Detroit from LaGrange. Comparing it to the way that he sponged off of great musicians of the past like John Lee Hooker, Robert Johnson, and Buddy Holly. Waylon, George, and Merle, and a lot of ZZ Top. Like Although the Chicken Ranch, uh, located less than three miles from LaGrange, held a special place in the hearts of many Texans as a sort of landmark, not everyone was cool with there being a house of ill repute in their down-home rural community. When ZZ Top released LaGrange, it brought a surge of attention to the brothel, ultimately leading to its closure by government authorities. Let's get into this story. So the beginning of the end was in 1973, about three months after ZZ put out LaGrange. Marvin Zindler, a reporter from KTRK-TV in Houston, about 100 miles from LaGrange, he made a bold move to make a name for himself by shining a spotlight on the ranch. He claimed his intention was to expose organized crime and corruption at the establishment, you know, urging the Texas Department of Public Safety and local police to take action. Even though it was a hot spot for lawmen and politicians, Zindler was not afraid to stir the pot. He went straight to the governor, questioning why the place was still up and running. The reporter even called out local restaurants for having what he labeled as slime in their ice machines. <laughs> Zindler came back to LaGrange to do a follow-up story, and the sheriff, remember Big Jim Flournoy? Uh, he caught wind of it. And Zindler was reporting on the lawn of the courthouse when Big Jim approached him and told the troublemaking outsider to get the hell out of town. Next thing you know, they're going at it like two bulls in a china shop. With Big Jim shoving Zindler to the ground, yanking off his really crappy wig and throwing it in the street. Well, you can imagine Zindler was not going to go away quietly, especially after that incident. Uh, uh, this guy, he thrived on publicity, one of those guys. So Zindler slapped the sheriff with a $3 million lawsuit. But the town was not about to let their sheriff go down without a fight. The citizens rallied behind him and raised money for the T.J. Flournoy Defense Fund. <laughs> yeah, how crazy is that? When the dust settled and the settlement was reached, nobody knows exactly how much the sheriff had to pay. But he swears it's nowhere near that $3 million figure that you know the reporter threw out there. Just another day in LaGrange, Texas, I guess. The intense media coverage forced the hand of Governor Dolph Briscoe. Even though he didn't want to do it, Governor Briscoe had no choice but to order the closure of the infamous chicken ranch. So Aerosmith's power ballad, I don't want to miss a thing, helped shoot the Armageddon motion picture soundtrack to epic heights. But it wasn't just about that song. ZZ Top's LaGrange was the perfect choice for a rebellious moment in the movie when Bruce Willis was teeing off from his oil rig to irk some Greenpeace protesters. Hey! How about the use of LaGrange in the remake of Walk and Tall starring Johnny Knoxville and Dwayne The Rock Johnson? <laughs> of course, the influence of LaGrange goes well beyond Hollywood from the politically charged Mexican rap rock band Molotov 
to Hank Williams Jr. Even the hippie band Fish and hardcore legends DOA have covered LaGrange with a fresh take on Billy Gibbons' iconic riff. Get yourself in. After the state of Texas closed the chicken ranch, its legend lives on. One might even say that the ranch has been martyred. In 1977, two lawyers from Houston made a move that caught attention. They bought the building and the land of the chicken ranch, but they didn't stop there. They relocated the main house to Dallas. In September of the same year, it reopened its doors as the Chicken Ranch Restaurant, with Miss Edna stepping in as the hostess. In 1969, ZZ Top came together as a band, while the town of LaGrange had its roots dating back to 1837. With over 200 years of combined history between the two, it's surprising that it took 42 years for ZZ Top to play a concert in LaGrange. But it finally happened when the band headlined the Fayette County Fair in LaGrange on September 5th, 2015. The Jack outside LaGrange. A little old band from Texas played that home out on the range. Make no mistake about it, it was tight. You might even say it was historic. Have mercy. I'm ready. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about ZZ Top and LaGrange. Oh my gosh, what a great song. What are your memories of? What do you think about the guitars? Ah, just such a great song. You know, if you dig our content, we invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Just check on the, the bell and click on the red button. And make sure to check out our Patreon. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.